How do you become a media mogul? Today, our guests, we're very pri privileged to have Alan Meckler in our studios. Today, Alan, you're the chairman of Web Media Brands, I believe. But you've had a long career where you've done it all. You've built companies, you've sold companies, you've bought and sold companies. How'd you get your start? Did you set out to be a media mogul? Uh, I guess I, I had entrepreneurship in my blood. My father was somewhat of an entrepreneur, so I guess uh, that's where it started. Uh, when I was 11 years old, I tried to convince Spalding, a sporting goods company, to put the emblems of all the football teams on their helmets, and I, they threatened a lawsuit. Uh, and then I tried to get Pepsi to make Pepsi Pop, so it just was an extension. And so, but when you started, you were actually in academia. That's right. I was uh, getting a, uh, a PhD in American history, which I ultimately got, but it took about 10 years, and uh, decided that combining uh, publishing and, uh, and, and academics would be, uh, would be nice, business and academics. So you launched a small company? Well, I, I first got a job in publishing, which was hard uh, when you don't have any experience, and then within about 18 months, I started my own. And as, was that a big leap? I mean, there's this mystique around the entrepreneur, and we talk about how much risk entrepreneurs are willing to take and so forth. Was that a tough move? Well, it, it, was, it was a bit risky. I, uh, I had a little insurance policy, but uh, I was working for another company at the time, and uh, I was uh, doing some traveling to university libraries and came up with what I thought was uh, a foolproof idea, and it turned out to be a good one. And so, fast forward to the 1990s, you built a, a good media enterprise in the 1990s, capitalized on the internet wave before a lot of folks did. Did you see something there that other people missed? It was an extension of uh, the company that I'd started in 1971. I was publishing uh, technology information for research libraries around the world. And in the, in the, just to backtrack, in the 1980s, uh, we were covering CD-ROM before anybody else again, only for the library, and uh, I happened to come across the internet in 1990. It was a natural extension from microfiche, microfilm, CD-ROM, and then to see uh, the internet. Now, when I first heard of the internet in 1990, it was only text-based, and, and no one knew about the World Wide Web coming, so I only saw it as, as the next thing for research libraries, but I jumped on it. And then with internet news and, and so forth, I mean, the, the thing that you have done again and again, it seems that a lot of people fail to do is, you're willing to part with your companies and your properties when the price seems right. A lot of people sort of hang on, this is my life, my identity, and they go down with the ship eventually. You seem, don't <laughs> seem to have that problem. Well, one, one, once you've sold a name, uh, a company with your name on it, you, you, you cross that bridge very easily again. But uh, I, I think with business, uh, as an entrepreneur, I, I hate to be uh, crass with the, the, term, the term, but you have to be able to kill your young. Uh, and move on. You know, you can't get too married to an idea, and sometimes you just have a sense you've hit the top and it's time to get out. And we'll talk about what you're doing now and the media industry in general in detail in a couple of other segments, but if you had to encapsulate over your 40 years of experience the three things that have made you successful where a lot of other people have failed, what would they be? One, I think, is uh, probably my historical training is to be able to look backwards and forwards, uh, to, to look at the past, and it doesn't always repeat itself, but as I think Mark Twain said, it rhymes. So to be able to sort of equate and say, oh, that, 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 that may be the same thing that I saw before or, cl or, or close to it. So I, I, think, I think that that's actually uh, you know, the, the key factor. Uh, I'm not sure if I know any others, but that's certainly the key one. And, and, and of course, being willing to fail. A lot of people just can't handle failing. I don't. I hate to fail. I'm very competitive, but when I see a good idea, I'm willing to take a loss uh, to try it out. And talk about a failure that because uh, presumably the first thing worked. Maybe it was down the road that you well, failed. Well, it didn't. I mean, uh, the the first thing I did worked uh, covering microfiche and microfilm for libraries. Uh, but uh, I tried too many things. Uh, I, I think the other key is focus. Uh, from 1971 till about 1994. Uh, I, I, for every success I had, I had one or two failures. Uh, but I was in a variety of different areas. I, I was publishing an antique boats uh, newsletter. I was publishing the first white collar crime newsletter in, in, in the history of white collar crime. Uh, but I also was publishing materials about CD-ROM and whatever. So I, I couldn't focus my, my promotion budget and therefore uh, doing too many things, too many good ideas. And it wasn't until about 91 or 92 I said, this internet thing, is really going, I'm going to bet everything on this. And when I finally focused uh, is, is when uh, the success started to come. Great. Thank you, Alan.